TV host Nishat Al Delhi reported on a leak confirming an intercepted phone call from a few years back confirming the action. He reported in part, today's leak confirms without a doubt that Erdogan, his state, his government, and his party are transferring weapons from Turkey to, this is a shock, to where you may ask, to Nigeria, and to whom? To the Boko Haram organization. Well, Raymond Ibrahim, a journalism fellow at the David Horowitz Freedom Center and an expert on the Middle East and Islam, joins us now with more on this. Welcome, Raymond. Hello, Heather. Are you surprised by this report? What's your take on it? No, I'm not surprised. And um, my take on it is that this, the actual tape that was made that you referenced and you quoted was made apparently um, in 2014 or 15. And um, it was reported widely in certain areas in the U.S. and in the West, not so much, and not much came out of it. And the reason, I think, is because Erdogan wasn't so, um, didn't have his fingers so much in um, Islamist politics outside of his own nation. But now that we've seen, you know, um, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the ISIS Islamic State Caliph who was killed recently, and he was found just three miles from the Turkish border, which is in fact one of the last, or if not the last bastion of jihadi so-called freedom fighters of attacking the Syrian government. Um, it, it's brought it up again, the fact that he's, everyone is saying, well, look, he's supporting ISIS. So now we're remembering, and that's that was, I think, the point of the Egyptian show, where we're bringing back to see that there's some continuity here. It's not just right next door to Syria, uh, to Turkey, meaning Syria. He's got, he's involved with some of the absolute worst Islamic terror groups. Remember Boko Haram, which its name loosely means um, Western education is forbidden, Haram, um, is, was basically doing what ISIS was do, is, is notorious for years before ISIS. So the whole, you know, head chopping, crucifying massacres, enslaving women and children, burning people alive, Boko Haram was doing that. And one of the things that international observers have been noticing, especially increasingly, is that their armaments, their weapons, are very sophisticated. And it's even spilled into the Fulani tribesmen in Nigeria and in other parts in Africa. For example, uh, I'm sure you know Bur Burkina Faso, also in Western Africa. Attacks on Christians have become horrific just in the last few months. There have been so many and so many killed and always in the context of checking out if they're wearing crosses, if they can say the Islamic creed or not, and then being butchered and so forth. And those tribesmen, the Fulani, who are essentially living almost on a primitive scale, appear with very advanced weaponry. Well, that's so really interesting, which would kind of seem to perhaps at, give more weight to this uh, idea that perhaps Turkey is collaborating with Boko Haram. What would right. the benefit be to Turkey of collaborating with Boko Haram? Well, there's several theories. You know, one is Erdogan basically is an ardent Islamist, and he is supporting and behind any Islamist movement in any country. Um, you know, he's a, he, the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. He was allied with Qatar of Al Jazeera as his ally. Um, and so you can see him, he's trying to help uh, develop these Islamist groups so they can overthrow more secular states. Though, in fact, in Nigeria, another an aside that I think is important, the president himself, Muhammad Bukhari um, of Nigeria, who's Muslim, Nigeria is half Christian, half Muslim, has been accused himself of being behind this the, the so-called genocide, which a lot of international groups have called what's happening to Christians in Nigeria, that he himself is complicit in, in this armament. So... He could very well be an ally of Erdogan and so forth, and it's just some sort of Islamist overall co coalition globally. I want to ask you, the President uh, Trump, of course, met with uh, the President of Turkey yesterday. Do you think he's aware of, of these kind of ties to terrorism, and, and what are your thoughts on that meeting yesterday? Well, in general, you know, I think, uh, you know, what he's aware of is really hard to tell. Um, but I think the meeting in general, you know... It, Trump and presidents won't necessarily bring up all these things, obviously. So when he met, for example, in Saudi Arabia with the king and so forth, he doesn't really mention human rights abuses and so forth for whatever strategic tactical reasons. So it's really hard to predict, but I think he needs to be aware because Erdogan's really, he's got his fingerprints everywhere now. It's not just Syria, which is very obvious, but now there's older evidence of him involved in Nigeria and also in Turkey itself, the, you know, the Christian population, the minority there. And remember, Turkey was originally entirely Christian. It was Anatolia. It was actually where St. Paul wrote all his epistles to. Um, they're really being treated badly and, and discriminated against and a lot of hate